Somebody taking video of you saying daddy yuck. Asian elephant demonstration. So we're just getting the ladies set up for what they'll be doing in the demonstration today. So we do have four different ones. That's to keep our regular visitors on their toes, but also to keep the elephants on their toes. They are extremely intelligent, and if they get used to a routine too quick, they'll start doing things before we even ask them to. So today we'll be doing the enrichment demonstration. So hopefully you guys haven't seen that one. We're always changing what kind of enrichment we do with them though. So you'll probably see a couple of different uh, enrichment activities we have for them. But we'll uh, go by introducing the keepers and the elephants today. So front and centre we've got Trisha. So you may know her, she's probably one of the biggest celebrities in Perth. She's 61 years old, she's saying hello to everyone now. So she's been a Perth since 1963 and she came all the way from Singapore. So she's been here a very long time, you've probably seen her. She's, uh, she's super great with people and everything now, so we can take her for walks around the zoo when uh, when the public are around, um, or we can take them both for walks in the morning, so before the public are around, because Permai over that side, she gets a bit more excited being the younger of the two. So Permai, who's just pulled that blue barrel down, uh, she's 28 years old, and she came from Malaysia in 92. So um, I thought we'd start now while they are setting up, because Permai's actually doing a bit of enrichment here with Claire. So fortunately, these huge animals weigh about 3,800 kilos, they're very strong, so they can help us out with setting up some of their enrichment as well. So right now, Permai is just going to get that uh, bag of hay in there. So that's a bit of a reward for doing so well in the demonstration. I'm sure she will. So we fill that into the blue barrel, and then she's going to use her trunk to meander her way through and then shake all of it out. So you'll see that at the end of the demonstration when she gets a nice big reward. She loves that. Trisha, on the other hand, um, she's had a fairly big day already, going for a walk and things like that, so we won't push her too hard, seeing she is 61. So right now, she's just getting set up with a nice massage on the back and on her knees. So it's called an equissage. It's uh, common in the horse industry, but um, yes, we just got a nice big one for Trish. So she'll enjoy a really nice uh, nice massage, and then she'll get a, she'll get the same hay, but she doesn't move hers down quite as quick as Permai, so she'll get it on the block down in front. So yes, so we're doing our enrichment today. So just while you are uh, watching the demonstration and when you are looking at animals all around the zoo, um, just remember that everything that we do with our animals is for their benefit. So whether it be for the mental health or physical health, um, we do it for them, so not for you. So it may be amazing and you might love it, but just remember it's not for entertainment purposes at all. It's just for these guys. So right now, uh, Trish is doing a bit of a, a bit of a stretch. So that's called a target stick. So Steve will call out and, and he'll tap which uh, which limb to move, and then she'll know to move it towards the target stick. And once she's reached it, he'll, she'll get the cue, uh, which is a whistle or a verbal reward, and then she'll get the food reward as well. So as you can see, it's tumbling out. She's got to swallow that food. <laughs> um, so this is a great. So there you go, you can see how Permai helps us with some of the heavy lifting. And so, so yeah, this is great for um, a physical activity for her as well, and yeah, just, just loves to help out. You'll see them, uh, they do like to show their excitement, and it, Permai does a bit more of a shimmy and a shake when she's having fun, whereas Trish is very vocal and loves a little squeak and things like that. But yeah, so with the target stick, it's a great way to get up close to the elephant and just look at their body condition. Um, those big, uh, you'll probably see when they're walking around or when their feet hit the ground again, they've got these huge feet pads down the bottom, they're really soft, and that enables them to feel vibrations through the ground. So doing this, uh, see it's quite easy to be able to see if there's any stone stuck in the bottom, if there's any abscesses or things like that, and just make sure their feet are in tip-top shape because they do have 3,800 kilos on top of them. As you can hear, Trish having a nice squeak there. So you can hear Permai. Permai's just getting excited. Claire's uh, just talking to her at the moment to see what kind of enrichment we can do. 
We have been doing a bit of soccer lately because it is the World Cup, so we're all getting involved and the elephants love doing that. And as you can see with uh, Trisha showing up here, she is still quite flexible in her age as well. So it's very handy for us to be able to work this close to the animal because you never want to have to sedate an animal or anything like that if you don't have to. So with the elephants, we can get vets to come in and do their checkup and things like that with no problems at all. So here comes Fermi. Fermi saying hello to everyone now. She's uh, finished with a bit of her enrichment and helping Claire set up. So as you can see, Claire can work nice and close with Burma. Burma is just saying hello. So with the enrichment, we try and find a real behaviour. So sort of a natural behaviour that you'd see an elephant exhibit in the wild. Uh, we are in a zoo, uh, zoo setting, so it's a bit harder, but the more natural we can make it, the better. So when we do find a natural behaviour, we'll try and add a cue to it immediately. And then, then over time, they'll learn that the cue means that they're doing the right behaviour, behaviour and then they'll know to do it when asked. So right now you'll be able to see that they can hold up to eight litres in their trunk. And they do love picking up water and they can spray that into mouth for drinking, but they'll also pick up dust and sand and they'll spray it all over themselves. That's the squeaking that you'll hear when they're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, so they do do something called dusting. So if you ever see uh, videos or elephants in the wild, they'll be throwing dust over themselves and just kill them. Keep their skin all uh, tip top, gets insects off, and things like that. And as you can see, 3,800 kilos, they're still very good on their feet, their balance is impeccable. Yeah, so it is important that those legs um, are in the best shape that they can be. In the wild, they'll also be using them to knock. Uh, knock the bottoms of trees and plants and try and get the salty roots out as well. So um, those front legs are very important as well. And as you'll be able to hear, um, Claire's constantly making sure that Fermi is listening and uh, giving her the rewards because it's very important to have an animal of that size so you have to make sure she's listening and you don't want her spinning around quickly or anything like that. But now we're just going to start another enrichment activity which is the, uh, the hoops that you would have seen Claire just go. So with that trunk, it's got uh, about 150,000 different muscles in it. Um, so we do try to utilize that in any kind of enrichment or training that we do. So in this, she'll know that she has to use judgment and she has to use all the muscles in the trunk to figure out where exactly to put it onto the, onto the tree. And there we go. So not only with the uh, hoops, we can also do that with shapes as well. They have a great memory. And, um, so yeah, we can do shapes, so we can hold up a blue hexagon or something like that and give her different circles and squares and things and she'll be able to touch the right one and she'll squeak it with excitement if she gets it right. So she does have a lot of fun with that one. And we, we do try to do a lot more with Fermi. Uh, she is a lot younger than Trish, so she does like to challenge a bit more and she does show a lot of excitement when she gets something right. Yeah, so a, they do love playing around together as well, um, so the soccer enrichment is great. Unfortunately, the keepers do have to run after the ball a bit too much because Permai can kick the ball a very long way and Trish can't kick quite as far these days. So Trish is more the goalkeeper and Permai is more the striker. But when you're looking around the um, exhibit as well, um, in between these demos, you have to see we have a whole lot of different enrichment activities that we can just leave the elephants with. Um, we'd love to be with them 24-7, but we're not allowed to, unfortunately. So we do have to leave them with things, uh, things to do to keep them both mentally active and physically active. So before when we were talking about with the hay at the top, oh, there you go, Trish, she's showing off a bit of a, a bit of artwork at the moment. <laughs> So I'll talk a bit more about their chalk drawings and the paintings and how they help our uh, elephants in the wild just at the end of the demo. As you can see, uh, Fermi's going to wave to everyone over there. Yeah, so when we're not around, we try and leave them with food activities and different things like that. So you'll see these big tyres, we might throw things inside of that. Um, apples and uh, vegetables and other fruits as well. Um, and then they'll lift it up with the brute strength. Um, we'll also give them huge ice blocks. Uh, we can just freeze all the fruit and food in that, so it's perfect. And they have a great time stepping on it and trying to throw it around and break all the fruit open. So just to slow them down a bit, in the wild they'd have to spend a lot of time searching for food and water and things like that. So if we can uh, try and slow them down in their eating and make sure they're uh, exerting some physical effort, then that's important too. As you can see Permai in the distance, uh, they, do, they are extremely strong. 
and she does like to help the horticulture team out at first zoo, so she does like to pick up those logs and position them around the edge uh, of the fencing, and then she lean on top of that, goes up, and then string all the trees up top and get to those. So you will see her a lot of the time walking around with logs and trying to set up to sneak a bit of a snack in throughout the day. But if you're with the boy, put your mask down the end. You've just got to watch out sometimes because he does love to play a bit too much and he can throw those logs quite some far, quite some distance. So you've got to be on your toes, unfortunately. So we're just going to, Perma's just going to do a bit of drawing and once she's finished, she'll probably show off what she's done. She does love to do that. Um, and so, and then you'll be able to compare between the different sort of artistic strokes between both elephants. So they've got nice individual characters and you'll be able to compare Trisha's to Permai. So Permai's just got a stick, just showing you how it is actually natural behaviour in the wild. The elephants do pick up sticks and stones and draw in sand and dirt and things like that. And we can find that out quite easily if we leave a, a big rock or some chalk that we use on exhibit, the boy will grab it and overnight he'll just be drawing all over his night quarters. So they do love to do it, so we try to use painting and drawing as much as possible for a good activity for them. You can see Perma just going now. So she does like to do big circles compared to Trish. Trish is the, she sticks to one little bit and goes up and back. Whereas Perma does like the uh, going around in circles. But uh, the, if anyone can't see, don't worry, she will. She usually picks it up and shows it off. So she knows she gets a reward as well. So fortunately, yeah, so we've been able to get that natural behavior of drawing in the dirt and sands that they have in the wild and then we'll be able to just continue that on and then push and test and challenge Permalay a bit more. So moving on to the paintings, we can actually start doing some directional paintings with her and ask her to go from left to right or top to bottom um, and then we can yeah, move on to shapes and then get her to get the paint brushes and putting them back in the corresponding colour uh, painting. So she does, love, she does love it when she gets it right, she's very excited and squeaks like crazy. She's just showing off the artwork for us, so. Beautiful grandma. Well so when we are working with our emotions programs, we do try to use the three R's. Um, so that's doing a real behaviour, like we were talking about before. Rewarding that behaviour, to, just so that they know that they are uh, doing the right thing, and doing the right behaviour that we've asked. And then the relationship. So the keepers here have been working with the elephants for 15 years and upwards. Um, so they're basically a part of the herd. So it's a very important thing. Um, the elephants have a five kilo brain. They're very social animals. Um, so when you're in the herd, that's, uh, you're in there for life. So it just enables us to safely work beside them. And that just enables us to do the best, uh, best possible care for them, both uh, in regards to mental activities and physical conditioning as well. So right now, you'll be able to see she's got the uh, soccer ball, ball perma. She does love to throw the ball. So it's a good workout for us keepers doing any enrichment activities like this as well. Perma loves it, she throws the ball, and then the mouth's open ready to get a reward. So. Yeah, so she, that is one of her favourite activities, to play around the soccer ball. We can do throwing, and catching and things like that, and it's just working that um, five kilo brain. It's just getting that working and making sure she's judging the speed it's coming in and things like that. So, very intelligent animal, that one. But yeah, with the, um, with the painting, so I did briefly mention before, it actually helps elephants in the wild. So, um, when both get the admissions and eye-to-eye -eye experiences and then purchasing their paintings as well, well, that all goes towards a conservation fund and then that's divided between different programs, both uh, nationally and internationally. So, with the elephants, unfortunately, their numbers are in decline. Um, they're found in Southeast Asia and it's a highly uh, populated area and unfortunately there's a lot of deforestation so the human to elephant conflict uh, is ever increasing. So what we try to do is try to... Oh, it's gone for that one, here we go. See if she can get it to clear this time. So we can mix up that, uh, we can mix up that activity quite a lot. Um, it's a front legs and back legs and it's always... Uh, it's always good to try and watch Push from us, the boy down the end, because he's got the enormous tusks. So he's actually learned to try and put, it, put his trunk around the side and then keep with the back leg as well. So they're very smart, these guys. But yeah, unfortunately in the wild, yeah, they are um, coming into the human conflict a bit too, uh, a bit more regularly these days. Um, unfortunately with deforestation, that's their food source. So they start looking for food and they might wander onto farms and things like that, and they'll take some of the crops. 
So what we try to do is try and educate the uh, farmers and the communities just to sort of plant, uh, plant crops on the outskirts that elephants don't like and will avoid. So that just reduces the conflict to there. Um, and then the other, side, the other darker side of it is the, uh, their poached for their ivory, which you'll see on butcher and rust, the big tusks. And they're also um, poached for their hide, their skin as well, so for traditional medicine. So part of the, uh, uh, part of, yeah, part of the money uh, contributed from the paintings and the admissions and the eye to eyes go towards yeah, educating the public over there. Um, that yes, that there is no value in those medicines at all. Go. So this is the um, this is the one we we're talking about with the shapes before. So you'll see, Claire will show one of the shapes. The perma's got to start thinking. <laughs> she does like she does try to get the reward nice and quick and just guess whichever first one. So we do have to try and go back a few times. <laughs> so you can see Trish is uh, Trish is drawing a nice little scratch down by Steve. Trisha, yeah, it's a perfect opportunity when she's like this. She's got a nice massage going. She's eating, so it's a perfect time just to check all her physical conditioning. You got this. You got this one, Fermi. All right, she's not going too well today. <laughs> There you go. So there's the squeak when she gets her eyes. She's very happy with, with herself when she does. So what we like to do as well with uh, the elephants as well, we can put out scent markers and things like that as well. So we can do smears and try and get them to track those down. So we, we'll try and do that one towards the end of the demonstration and see how she goes. We've got a bit of a vanilla paste and a bit of coffee for her to, to sneak out. All right, she's going for her next attempt. There we go, better than that one. So these are, so these guys, and especially because we can get up nice and close, um, throughout the day they'll get nice pedicures, uh, pedicures throughout the day, they'll get nice tail soaks as well. We can um, ask them to lie down on their side and we give them a massive scratch and get in between all the skin folds as well. Um, and then yeah, we're, we're going to do other fun activities as well. So you might see them in the pool, uh, especially over summer. They love going for the swim, and then we'll throw something underneath, under the water, and you'll see them duck down like a submarine and try and find it and bring it up Find's to the surface. The, so, the elephants would love us to be out here with them all the time, but yeah, as you can imagine, there's a lot of cleaning to do as well. So 50-50 throughout the day, we're cleaning and then going towards the. Evening. There you go. She's getting it right, so she's enjoying it now. A lot better now. So if you ever come down to um, Perth Zoo on one of their birthdays as well, it's always it's always advertised on the website and usually in the papers on the news as well. So that's probably their favourite day because they get enrichment all throughout the day. So you'll get a human sized uh, human sized cake. So there'll be about five, five different levels and um, they'll smash that apart. It's all frozen out. And then yeah, we'll give a massive birthday present. So huge barrels about this big and we'll drill holes in it and um, just fill it with different fruits and veggies. And then they'll go around just pretending it's a soccer ball, just kicking it around and getting all the food. There you can go. They do love a good scratch on anything. You might see them like the rhinos as well. They'll just get their body on anything they can and give it a nice scratch. So we have set them up with some nice deep um, scratching holes all throughout the exhibits as well. All right, so Claire's going to go to the final shapes and then we're going to try and move on to the smell. So we'll start off with the vanilla, vanilla paste and see how she goes with that. And if, uh, if that goes well and is successful, then we'll move on to the coffee as well. Once we are finished with the demonstration, if anyone has any questions about our elephants here or um, globally, feel free to come down and ask us a question. We'll do our best to try and get the answers right. Um, that can be from anything if you want to ask us about some of the tools, like the training stick and the elephant guide, that little walking stick basically in Claire's pocket. Feel free, you can ask about the foods they eat, anything you like. So feel free to come down at the end of the demonstration.
you may have to talk up because uh, Permive will be shaking that blue barrel that's got all that hay in it like crazy. So, let's see how she goes. Alright, so Permive's going to go for a walk and I'm just going to throw out the rock with vanilla paste and we'll see how she goes with tracking it down. So as you'll see, she's got the trunk out and she's uh, smelling vanilla. Sort of like a giant eagle from the airport, check your bags. <laughs> Let's see, she, see how she goes. So you can definitely hear when they're having a good time and they're nice and excited. Alright, so that works pretty well with the rock, so we'll try the, uh, the coffee. We all need a bit of coffee in this winter weather, so we'll see how it goes. You're going to film the one? Yeah. 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 You're going to film If you guys want to continue watching or ask us any questions, feel free to come down to the front. Uh, Permai is just going to enjoy a big reward. We do have to slow her down a bit as well. The other reason for that is if she finishes too quickly, she'll be straight over Trisha's food and take all of Trisha's food as well. So thank you very much for coming today. And just keep in mind, again, as you do look at all the animals around the zoo, um, we do do everything we can for their own uh, mental and physical health as well. So as fascinating as it might be, just, uh, just remember it's not for entertainment purposes. Thank you very much for listening to the enrichment demonstration today and enjoy the rest of your time, Professor.